over with a bag of dust. And it worked right in your ass, <laughs> sitting on the ground like one of them little fancy midgets on a horse with a car. Ah! Stop ah! As life put so much pressure on you, like an elephant on a yoga mat, that you're literally just about to crash. Ladies and gentlemen, gather around and let me introduce myself as none other than the honest egg. I'll reveal to you the three magical secrets to making your first one million dollars in just 12 months. That's right, you heard right. 12 million dollars. Now, the key to riches and success can be all yours for a very low, low price of $999,999. Join Honest Eddie and let's. What the hell are you doing? Hey guys, and welcome back to The Castaway Couple. And for those of you joining us for the very first time, a big special warm welcome to you two. Firstly, let me apologize for Honest Eddie. We've just started having some paranormal issues recently, so we've had to deal with that. But don't worry, let's just try to ignore him and maybe he'll go away. Anyway, this video is intended to give you a bit of background about how Jan and I started our lives here in Australia. To hopefully give you some helpful ideas about how to navigate the property web here in Australia. And to share with you some of the wins and the losses that we've had throughout the process. The things we did right and some of the mistakes that we made so that maybe it can help you to hopefully avoid making them yourselves in your particular situation. But, before we proceed, let's just get real for a moment. Uh, we're not financial experts or professional investors by any means. So look, if you're looking for serious advice or trying to navigate the complex world of finance and property, then we strongly would encourage you to seek professional assistance. Um, our journey, what we're gonna divulge today is simply our own anecdotal experience consisting primarily of trial and error. And no, we're not gonna act like one of those YouTube gurus out there who claim to hold all of the secrets to becoming a multi-millionaire in just six months if you invest in their special exclusive, you know, online web-based training for just a small fee of $99 while they probably live in their mum's basement creating videos with convincing special effects and displays of opulence and cars and clothes and women and money when in reality they probably don't even have any idea how to op operate a bloody screwdriver. So just, oh, it, it's infuriating. Look, I digress. Let's, let's move on. The hassles of house hunting. It's important to note that our dream was never about renovating or buying this house, the one that we started with. It was more of a decision we thought would work at the time, ultimately a means to an end. Uh, and in some ways it did serve its purpose, but in many ways it wasn't what we truly wanted and many factors played into that. Let me explain. Location. Location is paramount. It determines the accessibility to amenities, proximity to schools, uh, transportation options, and just the overall desirability of the area. Neighborhood. The neighborhood safety, community atmosphere, uh, the reputation, that should all be evaluated. Uh, researching the crime rates and looking to locals to provide valuable insights. Factor three, property condition. Assess the condition of the property itself. Uh, consider factors like age of the house, maintenance requirements, and any potential renovations or, report or repair costs that may be involved. Number four, size and layout. Determine if the house meets your spatial needs and preferences, or the block of land, for that matter. Consider the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, living rooms, and storage available. Factor number five, affordability. 
Evaluate the property's price in relation to your budget. Consider the mortgage payments, taxes, insurance, and ongoing maintenance costs to ensure that it aligns with your financial capabilities. Factor number six, potential for growth. Now this is a big one, guys. Assess the property's potential for appreciation in value over time. Factors like upcoming developments in the area, infrastructure projects is a big one, and the overall market trends can impact financial growth significantly. Now, most importantly, I think is factor number seven, lifestyle fit. Consider how the property aligns with your lifestyle and future plans. Think about factors like proximity to work, recreational activities, schools, and family or social networks. These things are of utmost importance and they ultimately define whether you're going to be happy in that property or miserable. So during our property journey, it's important to acknowledge that we face challenges and we made critical missteps in several key factors, which ultimately affected our ability to maximize our return on investment. Uh, while, you know, while the end result may not have been poor, when considering the final sale price, it's essential to take into account the significant amount of effort, resources, and labor that we invested into the property. Uh, in, in retrospect now, when we look back on it, it can be likened to that of a, a forced savings account. So this basically means that when factoring in the extensive hours spent renovating the house, so the labor, and the necessary upgrades to bring it up to the desired sale price, we essentially, look, we broke even, and that's the honest truth. Uh, in essence, we were able to recoup the initial investment, but the overall return was minimal due to the substantial expenses that we incurred. So my wife and I did most of the work ourselves, which plays into a big, big factor where we saved a lot of money on paying professionals for labor. Now, one of the key factors that played a significant role in our outcome was the property's location. Unfortunately, it was situated in an undesirable area, lacking proximity to develop major areas, hospitals, not a hospital in sight, proper grocery stores, uh, and adequate access to public transport, which was virtually none. This drawback severely impacted the property's potential and hindered its growth compared to if we had opted to build a new house in a developing estate with you know ample room for expansion and a lot of infrastructure projects which occur very close to those estates. Um, even now as an example, so let's say the properties that we purchased here in Queensland, a little over a year ago, we've already achieved a return of close to half of what we were left with, with after five years at our old property. And we have literally put no effort into them whatsoever. Um, okay, yeah, I've slapped some paint on the walls and stuck some wallpaper on in the bedrooms for a few bucks, but it's really an insignificant amount of money just to, you know, spice things up a bit. Make it our own, which is what we wanted to do. Just add a little bit of our own zazz. Um, you know, this leads us to the topic at hand, by the way. Buying versus building. It is a crucial decision that requires careful evaluation of various factors, including location, customization options, cost, and the long-term potential for growth. By considering these aspects and making an informed decision, individuals can set themselves up for a successful and rewarding property investment journey. So while our personal experience leaned towards buying an existing property, um, considering all of the above factors and renovating it, it's important to explore options and understand their implications. So in our reflection, we realized that perhaps a little more thought and patience could have led to a better outcome. However, at the end of the day, we can't complain. Um, we're grateful for where we are now. Still pursuing our dreams of living in the Philippines, above all else, absolutely above all else. So stay tuned, by the way, for more updates on that in our upcoming videos. So looking back, uh, our previous living situation would require generally between two to three hours of commutes every day. Um, Jan used to work in the city, so our mornings began at at least 4am. I would drive her a minimum of 50 minutes to the nearest train station, 
And if I had work on the other side of the city, I would drop her off literally at work and continue on my way off to where I was going. So she would start her day at 5.30, 6am, already at work, and finish at 5pm when she was due there at 8.30. I'd wrap up my job, I'd do some more overtime because my job normally consisted of overtime every day, had to get the job done. So depending on where I was working as a tradie, she would either make her way to the closest train station where I'd go and pick her up, or if I was lucky enough to be passing back through the city, I would pick her up on my way back. And then of course we'd have to fight the traffic peak hour for about two and a half hours on our way home. It was about an hour and 50 minutes to get to the city on a good run. So we'd arrive at 7 to 8 p.m. most nights and even then I'd still go and unpack my tools, set up a bunch of work lights and continue working on the house until midnight. Only to repeat the process the next day. Um, weekends were no exemption as I would normally work overtime and do weekend work because I had to get the money for the house for the renovations that we were doing. We were already so deeply involved that's, that's the only option I had. So every minute that I could be productive, I made sure that I was. And if I didn't use every single day like that, um, we would still be stuck there today. So look guys, I won't sugarcoat it. Honestly, it nearly killed us. Physically and mentally and emotionally in more than just one way. But look, now we have ourselves in a very decent place. My work is just five minutes around the corner. Um, all of the amenities, essential, you know, grocery stores, hospitals, doctors, clinics, shop, you know, any kind of shop that we would need, furniture, there's an industry here, there's, you can get anything made, get anything done. It's within a 10 minute radius of us. And I would never trade it back for what it once was back in uh, Victoria. So our dream now revolves around living self-sufficiently, off-grid and independent of the system, growing our own food, having our own water source and embracing a peaceful existence. We aim to break free from the debt traps and the never ending pace of this Western life. You know, we've just had enough and we're tired. I've mentioned this a hundred times before, but look, the past five years have been an intense journey. Accomplishing what it feels like many couple may take a lifetime to achieve, we had to do in five. And truthfully, we are, we are exhausted. Um, anyway, dear friends, that's our story of how our lives unfolded. Um, we invite you to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more raw stories, valuable insights and connections. Let's connect because we genuinely want to connect with all of you. Um, hopefully we can be a source of laughter, joy and perhaps even inspiration for those who may be in need of a glimmer of hope or just, just for a touch of joy in their lives. Um, Please feel free to leave your comments below. Um, if you're, you know, in a situation similar to ours, if you can relate to us, we want to be able to be that shining light. You know, that, that little sparkle that can just lift you up and elevate you every single day when you get up, when you think all is lost, when you think all is hopeless, because believe me, there's many times, many, many a times that Jen and I have felt that way. And it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling and it's something very, very difficult. It's a hole that's very hard to climb out of on your own if you don't have the support, if you don't have a support network, if you don't have people around you. Sometimes this might be all people have. Just this talking head on a YouTube channel, on their phone screen or their iPad screen or their TV screen, whatever they have, you know? And if there's any way that we can be a source of hope, a source of inspiration, that's all we're aiming to do here provide a little bit of joy, a little bit of laughter, and to connect. If you have any questions, connect. We'll do our best to get back to you. If, if you wanna just drop us a comment, a little bit of advice, uh, something about our channel, how we can maybe be more creative or a bit more aesthetically pleasing with the way that our you know videos flow and, and what we're doing, please feel free to comment. All constructive criticism is accepted. So look, we really thank you for your support and we're here to support you back. So let's work together and let's make this world, let's, let's make this a better place for people. Let's give people the knowledge, let's give people our experiences and share what we have learned, the mistakes, our downfalls, our wins and our successes. Because at the end of the day, that's what all of this is about, at least here on The Castaway Couple.
So stay tuned for more guys. And most importantly, take care.